Today we're comparing the Monolith M2100 2-channel Class AB amplifier to the SMSL A300 Class D amplifier. I know, crazy, right? So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's find out which one is better, Class AB or Class D. If you are new here, please consider subscribing. I know that 40% of people that are watching this aren't subscribed, but if you do subscribe and you fill out the Google form, you have a chance to win a whole bunch of free hi-fi gear when I hit 200,000 subscribers, and we're getting close. Speakers from Wharfdale, speakers from SVS, Black Ice Audio Tube Amp, brand new one-of-a-kind DAC from Gishelli Labs, another DAC from Gishelli Labs, U-Turn Turntable, project turntable, gift cards from Emotiva, thousands of dollars of products from companies like Cambridge Audio. The only thing you have to do is fill out the Google form, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram at Cheap Audio Man. But if you don't have Instagram, don't worry about it. And if you're already subscribed, you can still enter to win. So thank you so much for watching and donate your subscription today. <laughs> So I get the question all the time, which is better, Class D or Class AB? And of course I can't answer that question because all amps sound different. Class D has come a long way and personally for me, I feel like some Class D amplifiers have gotten a little bit more organic. Stuff in the past I always seemed was a little bit harsh, but now I'm painting with broad strokes because there are good sounding Class D amplifiers out there that sound, when I say good, I mean they sound natural. They sound real. What's interesting to me though is Class D prices are starting to creep up while Class AB prices are starting to creep down in some instances. So I have the brand new Monolith 21, M2100X. I think that comes in at $400 for a two channel Class AB amplifier. Their stated specifications is 90 watts times two into eight ohms and 135 watts times two into four ohms, big toroidal transformer, very traditional design, XLR inputs, which are unbalanced, but they're still XLR inputs on the back for convenience, and then RCA inputs on the back. Very simple, straightforward, just a power amp. No volume control, no nothing. So why am I comparing it to the A300 from SMSL? Well, mostly because of price and because of power. Now these are self-reported numbers too, but I think you can go check out Audio Science Review. I think they tested this and you can see what type of power ratings they got. But their self-reported power ratings are 85 watts times 2 into 8 ohms and 165 watts times 2 into 4 ohms. You can also bridge this thing and get 330 watts per channel. So when you're running the A300 in stereo, power ratings are fairly similar. It comes in at half the price though, $195. And then if you get two of them, it comes in right at $400. So the same price as the M2100X from Monolith. However, the A300 has multiple inputs. It has multiple EQ settings. It can do a low pass filter and it can be bridged. It also has Bluetooth. The really good comparison would have been the A2 from Emotiva, but I don't have the A2 from Emotiva. So let's talk about what I had it hooked up to. <laughs> One of the best ways to compare amplifiers, in my opinion, is to have the exact same front end. When I say front end, I mean source. So I had two Weem Pro devices. So I had those linked, which means they're playing the same song at exactly the same time. I had those running RCA into the M2100X from Monolith and the A300 from SMSL. Now, there is a bit of a level disparity because the A300 has volume control. So I had to level match these a little bit because you can't turn off the volume control on the SMSL. And even if you could, there's no guarantee that it would have the exact same gain setting as the M2100X. That's a mouthful. Then I had the monolith and the SMSL running into my speaker and amplifier switch. So one little bear, VU3, I believe. I always get that wrong. It's a really good little component for 130 bucks. Then I had that running into a pair of Hikos, the Aurora. I think that's how you say it, 300. They're a bookshelf speaker, six and a half inch woofer, $419. They're beautiful. That review is coming out soon. I don't know that speaker really, really well right now. 
but you don't need to know a speaker really, really well to hear the differences in amplifiers because you can just listen to A, then listen to B, and then report the differences. And I was listening to all this in my living room, stepped back about 10 foot, 10 feet away from the speakers. I've been listening more and more in my living room because I get a better idea of soundstage, spatial cues, and things like that. So I'm not just in the near field. So let's talk about how they sound. <laughs> I listened to a bunch of tracks, but the ones that I really leaned into and really analyzed the amplifiers were Uninvited by Alanis Morissette, uh, Eulogy by Tool, You Know You're Right by Nirvana, and Evolution by Korn. At the one minute and 10 second mark of Evolution by Korn, there's a guitar solo it comes out of the right speaker. On the A300, I heard a lot more reverb, a lot more clarity. The guitar hung out in the air a little bit longer. And soundstage was also more clearly defined, especially with the center image with Jonathan Davis's vocals. But more importantly, the thing that surprised me was the drums were right dead center. You Know You're Right by Nirvana. Ooh, love this song. It's so thick with the bass line at the beginning. First 30 seconds is the part that I listen to over and over again. On the Monolith M2100, X, Kurt Cobain's voice was a little bit stepped back and less clearly defined than the A300. The bass was also thicker on the M2100X. And I can really hear a difference because the bass line of that song in the first 30 seconds is really put on display. It was just thicker, more palpable with the M2100X. Eulogy by Korn at the 1 minute 40 second mark, the SMSL was a little harsh because there's a a little bit much. And the Hikos, kind of initial impressions, a little bit of a laid back speaker. So to have that part be a little bit harsh on those speakers tells me that's gonna be harsh on every speaker. Now, the A300 redeemed itself because the snare drum hits were way more organic on the A300 than they were on the M2100X. M2100X was just a little bit covered up less clearly defined, and less reverb after the initial attack. Uninvited by Alanis Morissette, the studio version, about three quarters of the way, it's just her voice and there's just reverb. And you can just hear it way better on the A300. So, what are my final thoughts? One is not better than the other. Actually, one is going to be better for certain types of speakers. For instance, I think the M Gosh, I cannot get this right. M2100X is going to pair really well with something like the Klipsch RP600M Mark I's, most Klipsch. So you'll combine the Ford nature of the Klipsch, especially in the mid range, with more of the laid back mid range of the M2100X. Conversely, if you have a warmer speaker, you should probably go with the A300. I left the A300 in the flat mode and there are EQ settings. So if you have a more laid back speaker, think something like the Wharfdale Diamond 11.2s. I know that's a discontinued speaker, but it's a little bit on the warm side. That's gonna pair better with the A300. Something like the ELAC debut reference, something like the PSB Imagine XBs, gonna pair really well with the A300. If you have a very neutral speaker, something like the ELAC Unify 2.0, then you're going to hear more reverb, I think a lower noise floor with the A300. I do think the A300 outperforms the M2100X when it comes to space, noise floor, instrument separation, and center image. I think long term, the M2100X is going to be able to drive more speakers. I get that on paper, the power ratings for the A300 are similar and definitely exceed the M2100X when in bridged mode. But in real world applications, I think the M2100X is going to play louder and be able to control itself more than the A300. I'm still not convinced that a Class D amplifier can play loud for a long period of time without starting to kind of fall apart and without the speaker kind of falling apart. Even though when measured, I see the power ratings are legit on the Class Ds. Anecdotally, when I'm listening at louder levels, now both of these, to be fair, both of these amplifiers can push a speaker to the point of it's not being able to handle that much power. But with big bass hits, I felt like the M2100X was more composed than the A300. You gotta take that with a grain of salt though because that's like at 90 dB or higher. Most people aren't going to be listening at those levels. 
if you have a speaker that's very low in efficiency, I think the M2100X may be the better way to go because you're gonna have, in my opinion, a little bit more current capacity with the M2100X. So which one is better? Neither one. It depends on what you want. I think you're gonna hear more detail with the A300. I think you're gonna get more power with the M2100X. M2100X is no slouch, but in direct comparison, a300 is cleaner. So if you want to support the channel, you can buy me a cup of coffee down at the bottom of the video. There's the thanks button. Put a little money in the tip jar, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. You can sign up for Amazon Music, Title, or Rune. Links in the description. You can use the affiliate links in the description. If you click and buy, I do get a commission. It doesn't cost you any more. It's great way to support the channel. You can also check out one of my other videos right here or here. You should really click on it and watch it. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen, maybe through one of these awesome affordable amplifiers and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.